All right, I think I'm on. Hey, man, I'm on too. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Welcome, hey. welcome. Well, it's another episode of OTX NT. So here we are. In fact, we got one here, and then next week we're together live. We're gonna do one. It's gotta happen. We have to do it. I mean, uh, I, the outcry from our mass audience base would be so so terrible if we my didn't. twelve have said something. No, I'm just <laughs> saying, my twelve have not even said anything. So at least we'll be together. Uh, <laughs> Referring to the fact that next week is the Southern Baptist Convention's annual meeting in Indianapolis, and uh, we're going to be there in on the action. And so, uh, Andrew, I, I had asked if you and I would just kind of talk through what some of the issues are. And I think mainly there's one that's kind of sucked all the oxygen out of the room. And so let's let's talk about that. Uh, you want to kind of just guide yeah. us through this. Yeah, so we're going to try to, I mean, the big thing we'll look at right now, I think it'll be the, the law amendment. And then if we've got time, we'll look at some other issues or we'll hit those maybe next week at the SBC, the big national convention. Um, a lot of exciting things. I think good news for Baptists. So this isn't designed to be a uh, get you all uh, anxious and worried uh, discussion. I think it's mostly positive. Um, but let's go ahead and pray and then we'll dive in. So join me, if you will, in the Lord's Prayer. <sighs> Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. All right. And of course, this discussion comes on the heels of the, the, the Methodist uh, news uh, of late, uh, with a million members pulling out. Uh, I mean, just yeah. unbelievable things, but um, there is a certain heightened alert of what we're looking at as we approach the SBC, and uh, we recognize that um, there is uh, a tendency of drifting uh, with large institutions with the culture. And so uh, are we at a fever pitch moment where we're going to try to uh, cease to drift, or is it really people stirring this up more than it needs to be? You know, th yeah, this that's is a good question. question. So um, the law amendment, uh, the law amendment was brought forth Last year, I think over 2,000 pastors had signed on it to make sure that the executive committee brought out the amendment to the floor of the messengers, mm -hmm. and uh, they reluctantly did so, uh, and uh, they brought it out with a negative recommendation. Uh, so this is what happened last year in NOLA, uh, New Orleans. And uh, the messengers, uh, the, the law amendment, we, we've discussed this on prior episodes. Feel free to go back and look. But it was more or less just making a statement that is in our confessional uh, documents, uh, Baptist Faith and Message, and repeating it more or less in our Constitution. So kind of giving it more um, legal authority, so to speak, uh, in our in our um, constitutional documents. And so it was actually originally framed negatively, stating that uh, Southern Baptist churches will not employ uh, a woman uh, with a title of a pastor. It was amended from the floor to put a positive uh, uh, presentation of it <clears throat> that Southern Baptists will only uh, appoint uh, men uh, to the office of elder or uh, pastor as yeah. qualified by scripture. So it almost is just saying uh, identical language to what's already in our Baptist faith and message. And so it uh, was approved overwhelmingly. Uh, and uh, so uh, to change the constitution, however, it takes a uh, two consecutive votes in uh, two consecutive uh, convention meetings. So that one, I think, got the executive committee and and some of those that are against it, it, it cut them off guard. I, I don't think they expected it to pass because you have to have a supermajority to make it pass. And it did. Some of that could have been just the fervor of the messengers in light of the Rick Warren uh, Saddleback yeah. situation. So there have been a number of articles that have been released since people that we both respect on both sides of the yes. issue. That's what I, I'll tell you what I think that's. Before we go into that, I think that's what's yeah. been so crazy about dealing with this is, yeah, we have, to me, this is not a, this is not a, like, the good guys are on one side and the bad guys are on the other side uh, argument, right? This is good guys on both sides that, you know, there's a real disagreement about this. Um, and, and I, you know, I've got our, my, my thoughts on, I know you do too, and I, and we'll talk about that towards the end, but you're absolutely right. It's, it's kind of odd, like, to be at this level and we've seen like seminary presidents disagree, uh, you know, prominent, prominent leaders uh, in, in our convention disagreeing with each other. It's, it's very interesting for sure. 
Yeah. And, and I think that we're, we don't always agree on everything, but I think we're in agreement that uh, this amendment um, is not the end all be all for the Southern Baptist convention. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I think that's the, the important thing. There's a lot that has gone into this. There's a certain degree of um, the general uh, will of the messengers being fed up uh, with, with certain um, uh, arguments that have been made. And uh, a lot of the people that are against the law amendment, some of them are repeating Rick Warren's arguments, which were absolutely rejected by the messengers. Um, some of this, I think, does go back to Anaheim. And I think this is something that um, we just have to recognize. The The vote to remove Saddleback was stalled in Anaheim because the Credentials Committee proposed uh, a, a, a solution uh, seeking clarity over what the word pastor meant. Yeah. If you if you recall. Uh, and, no, I remember and I was there. <laughs> the yeah. messengers reject that overwhelmingly. Uh, we, we don't need to try to figure out what a pastor is. And then Greenway proposed a solution of figuring what does cooperation mean? That was rejected. And so the Credentials Committee, realizing that they could not uh, sustain a vote against uh, Saddleback, that's probably not the right language there, but um, realizing that they weren't prepared for that, pulled it back in and held it for another year until um, New Orleans. Uh, and so that's really what started this was, do we really not know what the word pastor means in our confessional document? Mm -hmm. And so that's where um, uh, Pastor Law proposed an amendment to say, let's make it very, very clear. And so um, last year, without this amendment, we removed Fern Creek and we removed Saddleback for an egalitarian stance that is outside of our um, confessional documents. So we do not have to have a constitutional amendment to police our uh, churches. Uh, we've proven that. And for that reason, I think a lot of people who are totally in agreement that churches should not um, give the title pastor to women um, are still opposed to a constitutional amendment because it's unnecessary. And when you do these things, there's the law of unintended consequences. And so you do have uh, that group that they're totally in agreement with us doctrinally on um, th this is not appropriate. We're complementarian. And yet um, is this overkill overreach that there, there's yeah. that group. Um, there's the group that are the um, egalitarians and complementarian clothing who are really trying to uh, move the convention. I think that's a small minority, but they do have influence because a lot of them are large churches. Um, you know, uh, I think that that's part of what we're seeing here. And uh, there's also the group that just says, I don't see a crisis here. If we pass this thing, we could lose a number of churches. Yeah. And we don't need to do that today. We're right. You know, let, can't we just get through the last five years have been rough. Can't we just kind of have peace? And, and so I think you have a lot of those emotions going here and, and it's not necessarily uh, that there's disagreement on the fundamental idea that the Bible restricts the office of pastor to men as qualified by scripture. Yeah. So let me, let me just speak into this for any of those who are listening, who are, who are not aware of all of this, Andrew, you already referenced it, but if you look at Baptist faith and message 2000, the very, one of the very last parts of that first part of it for under the article six for the church, it says um, that it's two scriptural offices are that of pastor, elder, overseer, which we amended at the floor. We're hopefully fixing that this year where you can't uh, just amend the Baptist faith and message from the floor. But the idea is the same pastors, elders, overseers. That's the first office. The other is deacon. Then it goes on to say this, while both men and women are gifted for service in the church, the office of pastor slash elder slash overseer is limited by men to men as qualified by scripture. It is always said this at least since the 2000 uh, and it, it, before that, it just said the office of pastor, right? We amended it last year to say elder and overseer, just to make it very clear. So that's always been in there. Now, here's what's interesting, right? This is this is why we we have some of the chaos that we're at. Is Rick Warren started this when he said this in uh, Anaheim, kind of brought this. When I say start this, brought this to the forefront when he said, "Hey, we agree with the Baptist faith message, ninety nine point nine percent of it. We disagree on." on a few words. The disagreement though is with this part, right? That 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 it's limited to men as qualified by scripture. Uh and and so that's a big question is does that set of words limited to men as qualified by scripture um does that is that something that Baptists can remain in fellowship with each other over? And that's kind of where the lines have been drawn, right? Is that we are seeing uh, that people are saying, no, look, it says that we truly believe that if you're going to be a pastor or an elder of some kind or an overseer of any kind, you have to be a man. That's in the Baptist faith and message. Uh, but yet we're seeing people say, well, you know, you can have 
uh, women pastors, as long as it's, you know, and, and, and like you have rightly said, there's, there's one set that are kind of like, well, you can have women pastors as long as they're not the main senior pastor, which is, you know, which is what this is. Uh, and, and so they would interpret Baptist faith and message as only talking about the main major pastor or the elders, right. Uh, okay. or you have people who are just saying, I don't believe that. And, and I want to be Baptist, I want to be part of the Baptist, but I also think that women can be the, the elders and pastors and overseers. Um, and so that's that's the issue. So the law amendment says, why don't we make it very clear that if you're going to be part of us, if you're going to belong to the Baptist Convention, the Southern Baptist Convention, that you must not employ you know, uh, women pastors uh, of any kind. That That's the whole idea. Is So it's just taking that piece. And like I said, a lot of that was brought up Every, a lot of that hit up into Anaheim, and and I'll just say this too. This is, this has been kind of an interesting thing too, Andrew. I feel like the argument at Anaheim was, this is a non-issue in Baptist churches. Why are we going around doing this? Why are we fishing for this? To where now it's not a non. It's being said if we do this, we are going to see thousands of churches who have female pastors right and so that to me I, I just don't know the answer like okay so which yeah. one is it which is this a non-issue or is it really an issue it's going to affect everything i and i i think you're absolutely right part part of so on the other side the side that's really for it i, I think there's a desire to make a very clear statement that uh this is not who we are yeah and there's been people that have been coloring on the border of the lines on this. And we want to make a very firm statement that you're outside of the general consensus of Southern Baptists. And the hope I think of people on that side is a lot of people would leave. They would voluntarily exit the SBC. And uh, because there is a, and I'm sympathetic to the argument, to be honest, that uh, the complementarian, uh, let's have women preach on uh, Mother's Day. As long as there's a senior pastor, women can preach from the pulpit. They can, um, they can carry the title pastor. Um, that, that this to me reflects a, a drifting towards an egalitarian movement, which most of the non-denominational churches maintain, or, you know, it's always dangerous to say most, many. And uh, a lot of the big churches in the country are fully egalitarian. And so there's pressure to pull us in this direction. And so by passing an amendment like this, it would make a very clear symbolic uh, deal. He's saying, we don't do this. And even if you're willing to change all your titles, that's still mean something. Um, but it, it would uh, it would push a certain group maybe out of the SBC that's um, really pushing us to egalitarianism. Yeah. I, it, I see I see that argument. I'm not saying yeah. that I'm I believe it, I, I, but I'm sympathetic to that feeling. Yeah, um, I understand. And, and look, you, yeah. you brought up at the right rightly so is we look at the Methodists and we say, oh, my gosh, what has happened to them? And so that obviously jolts a lot of people and say, what led to that? Right. And I yeah. do think that people make those, I mean, look, when you start to look into it and study into it, you do start to see these progressions that people, they, it obviously makes people say, what can we do to make sure that we don't go down a road like that? I understand that completely. Um, you know, here's, here's the other thing. And I think you and I have referenced this before is what, what this whole conversation, even what was brought up in Anaheim, when they said the title of pastor, like, what does that even mean? Uh, it, it does. We, it, it, uh, what strikes at really the heart of this though, too, is what does it mean to be a pastor? And I think ever since this conversation started years back, it's been one that I've had to wrestle with too, of like, okay, we need to be very clear in our language of what it means to be a pastor, uh, you know, what it means to be set apart uh, as, a, as an overseer. And I think that too often today we have we just hand that title out to anything. You pastor of gymnasium work and pastor of this area and pastor of that. And it's like, okay, but what, what did it originally mean? And what's it meant to me? And so I understand that some who are on the, the, the side for this too are pushing, like this helps bring clarity to what we mean is at least it should mean something along these lines that you don't just have pastor titles handed out for everything. Um, so I, I get that. I get yeah. that that there's a there's a need to try to try to bring some clarity to what the title is. But there's some and, pushback yeah. to that too, as we have seen some of the arguments. Well, get uh, some really good arguments. Yeah, yeah. sorry, I don't want to cut you off. No, no, no. That's it. That's you're all. On I'm the saying. cusp of something incredible. No, now, you're on the cusp of the greatness. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, uh, pushbacks. One of the early concerns that that hit was the uh, the NAF, uh, National Association of African um, uh, Fellowship. Uh, 
our uh, African American churches that align with the SBC, uh, they they acknowledge that we use the term pastor a little more fluidly um, than you might uh, in in Anglo churches, and that brought up a cultural argument that hey, some some groups use pastor uh, or elder uh, in a sense of minister, uh, and so it's 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 just a general you're serving the body, and it, it's not that hierarchical role. Um, and then some churches will still use the term bishop. Uh, which if you go to the 1925, I think, uh, Baptist Faith Message, it said bishop and elders and pastor was excluded. Um, and then in 63, I think it became uh, elders and, and maybe pastors, and then it became pastor. So there has been some fluidity in in the title language, yeah. um, which re, re, re poses a reality of what do we mean when we use these words and should we get into agreement on this? Um, the, the reality is I don't want to see a huge group leave over a cultural uh, title that um, is they're not they're not necessarily using those people in an inappropriate way, yeah. right? Functionally, they're not pastors as say my church would view a pastor, but yeah. they use the title more loosely. So I, I do think that there's a desire for clarity at the same time not to lose this. And um, cultural use of terms is something that we've got to consider. Uh, the the other side of the thing that oh goodness um, I don't want to lose my train of thought here. Um, there is a, a desire in clarifying this language that may only be surface level in what it produces. Uh, so the, the, the other argument is we get clarity on the title. Everyone changes their title to minister, which is kind of what, when I grew up, a lot of it was, is you had your pastor, everybody else was ministers. And um, if you did that again, there would be some clarity, but you would also have churches who have women functioning as pastors who would just not have the title. And so you 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 know if if you're giving up the office on a functional level and you're just addressing the title yeah. that doesn't really solve the problem. And so do you create a constitutional crisis? Uh, you know, some people have argued that that's what'll it'll happen uh, over the fact that you're not even really solving the problem. And uh, I think that's a it's a fair argument that that we should consider. Yeah, uh, I I think the reality is that you kind of have to take this in steps. And so I think you get clarity of what the title is to mean. And then yes, you may we may have to go further or work uh, to address some of the things to uh, make sure that people aren't functioning as a pastor. Um, and part of this is it goes back to what is our view of ordination. We have a very low view of a lot of things in Baptist life uh, compared to some of the uh, other uh, mainline denominations. Uh, and, and, you know, we haven't always clarified this and haven't had a need to because uh, our, our society and culture was was so Christian. But now that it has drifted so far, we're having to clarify things we didn't have to clarify before. So um, all that all, all that is uh, weighing in uh, the minds of Southern Baptists. And I think it's helpful to realize that many of us are going to take a side on this issue, but yeah. we don't have to see this as I'm going to war over this. Uh, yeah. So I, 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 for one, am in favor. I, I don't like where we're headed. I think it will be helpful to bring clarity and to do it in a loving way to say, I don't want to see half of the churches leave, but there's clearly um, fuzziness around the, the title and because of the title of the office of pastor. And so let's move towards clarity. And if we all have uh, subscribed to the Baptist faith and message, this is a, it's not really that tremendous of uh, a hurdle to put it in the constitution as far as my mind goes. And it does kind of put a line in the sand on an issue that really has been bubbling up for, for decades. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I land there, um, but I still understand the other side and I won't necessarily feel like I lost um, if it doesn't pass. Uh, I, I think it would be really helpful to do this right now, but if it didn't pass, uh, we still have the capacity to police our, our faith statement based upon the faith statement, yeah. uh, the Baptist faith message. So, yeah. uh, so I, I think that that's an important for people to recognize going in that uh, this is generally an issue that we're in agreement about. The question is, does it need to be a constitutional um, reiteration of what's already in the Baptist faith message? So, so that's a good, good thing. Cause I think Andrew, I, I land where you land on this, but, but there's some other stuff to this that you just begin to say, okay, so, so what do we, what do we believe? Right. And so there are some people that would push back and say, Hey, this whole issue of even the women pastors stuff is, should be a non-issue for Baptists, right? That, and I, and I don't know if, if this is a, 
Um, you know, some of it you can read. And like, I think I read an article that came from even one of our Baptist professors uh, in one of the seminaries talking about uh, how, uh, you know, it, you, you don't have to limit the office to to women based on uh, I don't know what he was, where he was coming from on that. Uh, but you'll, you know, people will push back and say that, uh, that this is not a, this is not an issue that we should fight over. This is an issue that we can, you know, that we can be at disagreements over and be okay. Like they would lump this into the same category as, and I've heard it said, right. And in fact, I, I read uh, one that talked about this, that if we go down this road and we say, hey, you can't have women pastors, then what's next, right? And kind of this slippery slope argument that are we going to have at some point in the future a certain pervasive, uh, maybe uh, eschatological viewpoint, so end times viewpoint of people then come and say, hey, uh, if you're an ah mill person, you have no place here, right? That we are definitively a premillennial or, a, you know, whatever, or a post trip, you know, it, it, yeah, does yeah. that, do they, do they even exist in the same camp? And, and that's something that, you know, that people bring up and say, is this one of those issues that, that could eventually open the door for more positions? Yeah. So what do you say to that when somebody says, this uh, is, this is more of a tertiary uh, disagreement, not a secondary issue disagreement? I, I think that that's uh, not necessarily a, a fair uh, approach because uh, this has always been in our, our, our confessional statements since 1925. So we, we never did have a statement on something like eschatology, pre-mill, post-mill. Um, we, we've always recognized that that is uh, not even worth bringing into the Baptist faith and message. Th yeah. This is something that uh, really, you know, I, and had Rick Warren not pushed as hard as he had pushed, uh, I think that this could have uh, worked out maybe a little bit more calmly, but you see we've reached a point where uh, the largest Southern Baptist church in America, by by some estimates, just kicked the, the whole thing over and said, we're egalitarian now. And, and we were supposed to kind of say, well, you know, Baptists don't care about these issues. They're not that big of a thing. Uh, that's just not where we are, and it's not really who we have been. Um, and, and part of it relates to our hermeneutics and the way that we understand uh, the Bible. And we, we aren't on a progressive hermeneutic generally as, as Baptists. Uh, so we, we just really have a hard time getting around passages like First Timothy. Um, and I'm glad that we don't want to just get around it because yeah. I, I think that creates a collapse. Uh, once you get around that one, you get around Romans 1 pretty quickly. Yeah. So um, the, uh, th that, this is a, now I would say, is this a moral issue? I... And this is the question we brought in um, a constitutional amendment to uh, oust churches that are um, uh, racist and have examples of uh, racist doctrine and practice. Uh, that was a clear, hey, this is sinful versus this is uh, the issue we're looking at right now is more of an interpretive issue. Yeah. Well, it, it is and it isn't right. Egalitarians from a Baptist perspective, we would say that that is a mishandling of scripture. Yeah. Now, how complimentary are we in terms of allowing a woman to step into the pulpit on a Sunday morning under the headship of a senior pastor who's male? Is that okay? Uh, I have problems with that. Uh, and that goes back to Al Mohler and discussing about the function in the office. You know, yeah. they start functioning. There really isn't a distinction from the office. But, you know, I, I'm not necessarily going to go to your church and police every aspect of that. Um, but one of the things that's really interesting that I've noticed over the years is, the title is really important to people. And that's one of the reasons I think this is a helpful thing is that if you if you say no to the title, you might find out very rapidly that you've shut down a whole uh, undercurrent of uh, egalitarianism because uh, that's you, the no becomes very firm and that is going to force people either uh, out or in, a, in agreement. Um, but uh, this is a bigger issue than that. Uh, and uh, it, it does have to go to hermeneutics, right? Uh, that That's the thing is uh, you can't, as far as I'm concerned, you can't take the prophecy of Joel and Acts, that their young women, uh, their, their young men will dream dreams and their women will prophesy and say that we'll affirm this and deny First Timothy uh, chapter two. I do not permit a woman to preach or have authority over men. Um, you cannot uh, use one to trump the other, right? And so I also am not going to take First Timothy and trump Acts. 
uh, I have to find a way to understand how both uh, passages function. Yeah. And I think context gives you that. that. I, I don't even yeah. think it's hard. <laughs> but um, the idea that just you you uh, you, you kind of say, hey, culture is moving this way. We're advancing in a good direction. Therefore, we're going to uh, skirt the issue and say Timothy's not binding. The word um, usurp authority is a word that's had uh, an interesting philology. Therefore, we're going to say it's meaningless. That was more or less one of the arguments made um, at NOLA, um, New Orleans. That's not that's not good hermeneutics. And once you say that we are going to bypass a letter because it's uh, distasteful to our society, then you're going to be pressed on the other issues. And I believe that that is what we're seeing in the Methodist Church 30 years later. So I, I don't think it's just a, a moot point. It's not it's tertiary. It's not a big deal. Uh, and part of the reason it's not is that it's in the Baptist faith and message, and it always has been. Yeah. Um, so uh, that that that's would be my response to that. Um, and and I would go back to what you said. You, you know, three four years ago, everyone was saying this is such a small percentage that why would we even fight over it? I don't even know if there's thirty churches that have anyone uh, on staff who's a woman with a pastor title. We were told this, and then we we get reports that came out that say fourteen hundred churches have a pastoral title for women, and it's not necessarily even a complementary function. Some of these women are full-blown teaching men um, in uh, in Bible studies, preaching from the pulpit. Uh, and, and of course, Fern Creek, we found out that the senior pastor was a woman. So this is a bigger issue than we were led to believe. And I think the messengers have felt that, that we have been ignored on this. And I think that's why you had an overwhelming movement before. Yeah. Um, so that, that would be my response to that. I just, I, I think it's, it's bigger than that. I don't necessarily think, I, I still think Rick Warren is a brother. I still think Saddleback is doing godly things. I think they're an error on their interpretation of certain passages. And um, because of that, I, I think that they best belong outside of the SBC. Um, but yeah, I'm not willing to necessarily call them to repent. Uh, I, I do think that they're scriptural error. Just like I think my Presbyterian brothers should stop baptizing infants. hundred percent. I, I feel like that's like, even what the cooperation group came up with, right? Is that we're not, when we're going to say that, and I know they want to use a different word than like, or is it disfellowshipping? Is that, is that what we're saying? Is that uh, not in friendly uh, cooperation? Yeah, with. yeah. Not in friendly cooperation. Like, but the idea is like, okay, we disagree on this, but th this is what we believe it means to be a Southern Baptist. Uh, this is where the this is where the messengers are on this, right? Um, this is where we historically have been, not just what's the flavor of Southern Baptist today, but historically, this is where we have always been. Um, and uh, you know, here here's the problem: is that uh, we we go into this, and um, you know, I don't know, man. It's um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those things that. Uh, I, I don't know. I just lost my train of thought too. As I was talking and then I just totally spaced on this thing. Oh, the, the, the pedo Baptist piece, right? That like, we are, we, we don't with those guys, we, we love our Presbyterian brothers. And, and there are some, and, and even one article was mentioned like, yo, know, that we have, I guess there are some Baptist churches that I guess accept pedo baptism as your baptism background. I would disagree with, with doing it that way. Uh, there's something too that we talk about believers baptism. That doesn't mean that we don't think that they're brothers. That just means that that's not our camp, right? Our camp is this, and there are reasons to break apart. And I guess that's that's what we have to come to grips with, right? Is this an issue that's willing to say we have to, we can't, we're not on the same team in the sense of this, not the grand team in the kingdom, but in terms of the team of what it means in our fellowship or our cooperating together. Um because yeah, no, we have no problem. I have no problem uh, hanging out with with a Presbyterian and talking about because there are a lot of shared, a lot of shared things in Absolutely. common with them. Um, and, and, yeah, sorry. We, and we've discussed like in the in the growing confrontation with the Christian world and the secular West, we're going to need friends. Uh, we're going to need to hang together tighter. Uh, you know, the the old doctrinal disputes. We've got to kind of hold hands and say, yeah, we disagree, but we're still. Uh, under the banner of Christ. Yeah. And so I'm not despising my brother, but I can't partner in missions in the same way when we gen genuinely disagree on what a scripture means. Yeah. And, and so, so be it, you know, this is not something that um, rises to the level of you've become a cult because you're egalitarian. Um, but your hermeneutics can lead you to essentially, I, I don't know how a, a church like the United Methodist church 
uh, can can fall under the banner of even Christendom anymore because they have uh, adopted sin as as okay. You know, like yeah. th- th- there's a different degree. Now I know there's good, wonderful Methodists that are still there because they don't know what to do. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the things that I think Baptists can do by being clear on these things is uh, invite some of those uh, folks. Come on back. We we're who you guys used to be. You know, <laughs> we we didn't move in your denomination moved. But that's why we need these boundaries. We need these clear points. Uh, and it, it's just something that is really important. Um, I did think it would be helpful to go over um, some of Jeff Orge's uh, recommendations um, because, uh, yeah, and, I, and we didn't want to get into names. I, I, and I think this is important because we both really love and respect a lot of people on both sides of the issue. I am on the side of, I think at this point in time, because of the cultural antagonism and the the loss of distinctions between men and women, it is at a heightened point that this would be a helpful clarification for the SBC. So I'm in favor of the law amendment. But um, I understand those that are against it. Yeah. And um, and I, I think uh, Je- Jeff Orge gives four points in his article. Um, he, and he comes from the perspective, I think, of there's got a lot of other pieces to this that people aren't seeing that that as an administrator he sees and he would urge that we don't go down this road. But he says, uh, one, let's use our current processes to respond to churches which clearly and intentionally operate outside of the confessional statement, declaring them not in friendly cooperation. So he brings up the point. We have a process that's already working. So let's continue to work that. So um, this is, if it was to fail, I 100% agree. We can still do what we've done uh, and and use the um, the means of the Baptist faith and message to handle churches outside of bounds. Yeah. Uh, two, keep debating the issue of gender leadership roles in churches with the goal of persuading churches to change their position or practices rather than removing them from the SBC. What, what do you think of that one? Well, I mean that's that's a tough one. Now, if he's talking about if he's talking about those who are loosey goosey in the sense of like that they. They understand the arguments, the egalitarian stuff. Um, then they have an issue with that. If you're talking more about like what we see as what it means to be Baptist, and we have a lot of cultural baggage, a lot of different things of what those. Then I I completely understand that, right? Of we have people that hey, we need to talk about how we use that title, what that would mean in your context, but what what we truly mean here. Like I get that, and I'm fine with working through the cultural pieces. Uh, I'm I'm not so much fine on on those who know what the issue is they know the culture of the the what it looks like here and they have chosen their side um that that's where i you know like i said so for one part yes the other part i'm i'm, I'm not i don't know about you yeah i you know and one of the big th- questions was if this passes do we immediately have to expel a large percentage of or not percent a large number of churches and uh, I think most everyone I've talked to has said, no, we, we need to enter into a, a period of time to give people chance a chance to move into compliance. Yeah. And so it would be a lot uh, more defined period of time and a clear definition of compliance. So um, that's what happens with the law amendment, pa- a law amendment passing. You have a, an expedited track on this and a clear finish line. I, I think on the issue of persuasion, if we don't pass this, then, you know, we we kind of have that fuzzy uh, place that we're at where um, how many churches can have a Mother's Day message from their woman pastor who serves under a, a senior pastor. Uh, I, I keep bringing that up because I think that that seems to be the toe in the water move that I'm seeing of churches mm-hmm. on this issue. Um, but I, I, I do like the idea of we don't want to have a uh, a moment where we just tear this thing apart. I, 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 I like the idea of persuasion. Um the issue I see on this one and maybe the others is, do we believe that the current leadership is going to really lead us in this direction? Or if the law amendment fails, will they be pleased to say, I'm so glad that's over, let's move on. And I think that's part of where the messengers are at. We, we were told it wasn't a problem and now it's such a big problem, we better not do it. And, and so there's a general distrust that someone would take this on as a... Uh, a as a major concern of the SBC. And even if the law amendment fails, I think someone needs to take this on. And it would really be helpful if we could create some sort of uh, group that would work through this yeah. because uh, it needs to be bigger than uh, a, a general sense of persuasion. Um, but um, nevertheless, uh, if it failed, I, I, I'm in favor of these if it fails for certain. I'm in favor of some of these even if it passes for certain. Yeah. Um, 
Let's persuade Absolutely. people. Num- number three, let's persuade people the unique role of pastors and the importance of preserving the title for specific functions. Not every church leader is a pastor. We need to do more than change titles. We need to elevate the pastoral role so that it towers above other leadership roles in title, calling, function, and stature. Yeah, I think that gets tied to two, right? I, and I do think that here's the thing that gets tied to two in terms of people who don't necessarily, maybe there's a cultural piece, but I think also there's that gets tied to two. Like we all need that. Every one of our churches should make a different, like there should be some, some doctrinal clarity of what it means to be a pastor, what it means to be an elder at a church, uh, what it means when we call someone a pastor or an elder. Uh, to, that, to that regard, too, I think a lot of churches should do a better job, too, of what does it mean to be a deacon, too, that we don't just slap the title because you're, you're a capable, you know, breathing adult man who's been at the church for 30 years. Uh, you know, that there should be something more to it and it needs to be what the biblical standards are, but absolutely. And and I get that. I know that that's a big part of this law amendment piece is clean up. What do we mean by pastor? What does it mean to lead? Uh, And so, yeah, I I couldn't agree more with uh, Dr. Orge here on three. Yeah. And and I think the reality is changing the title doesn't fix a problem of someone who just changes the title and yet still uses their women in a pastoral function. Yeah, And so we, we have to address that on either side of the law amendment, whether it passes or fails, uh, because the push will not just disappear. It, it's not, the culture it looks at Baptists and you can, if the law amendment passes, you know what the headlines are going to be. You know, Baptists re-express their hatred for women everywhere. Yeah. It's going to be this really horrible thing that we've done by doing what we've always done. Uh, but, but, you know, and the other thing, uh, culture, you know, I, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, you know, like everybody, we like to just celebrate our first responders and everybody claps. And uh, I think that's a good thing. Um, and I'm not, you know, because I'm a pastor, it's hard to make this critique. When's the last time you ever went somewhere and someone said, Hey, all the pastors and clergy, um, would you stand? We're just so grateful for what you do in our society. Um, that doesn't exist in our culture because the culture doesn't like clergy. <laughs> so, uh, the idea of, thumping down clergy and pastors and those, and I, I know we're Baptists, we don't have clergy lady distinction, but I'm just talking culturally how it's viewed. We do not celebrate religious leaders in our society very much because they're generally, they're not the experts. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that this is a, another reason why that's so important is that the outside world diminishes the value of pastors as well. Yeah. Uh, number four, we're almost done. We commit to cooperation in pursuit of God's eternal mission. We are a diverse, messy collection of churches with leaders of, uh, opining on every imaginable issue. We must celebrate our diversity rather than striving for conformity while doubling down on what the SBC came together to do in the first place, getting the gospel to people who have never heard it. Yeah. Absolutely. No. Right? What? <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, I mean, and that's that's absolutely clear. I mean, when you go to a when you go to a Baptist convention uh, annual meeting, it's very clear that we are uh, we're all over the place on things, right? Like, and 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 we're very different. But that being said, there are key convictions that we come back to that we're all on the same page of. Um, and uh, and but there's a different. There's not a one size fits all way in which we do. Our ministry. It's the same thing you look at. Even this, you know, you look at something like this, you'll see that that's the truth, even with our seminaries of how we, how our seminaries are set up. Um, that, yeah, you know, we have same convictions, but the way that we will train our people, the, the, the way that our contexts are different. Uh, and so, a hundred percent, you know, that like there needs to be some, uh, recognizing that, yeah, that we're not all meant to, we're not all conforming. But that being said, we should make sure, and I do believe, Baptists should, it should mean something to be Baptist yeah. uh, in terms of what we believe, right? That we're not non-denominational. We're not just, everybody's just kind of, we're, we're kind of going in the same direction. You can do your thing. I can, like, I'm a Baptist for a reason because what we believe and what we cooperate to do. Um, and, uh, and and let me just say this. This is where some of the issues come into play sometimes is people say, no, no, what we're here to do is the Great Commission. So it, it we sh- everybody should want to partner with that. And it doesn't really mean, matter what we agree or disagree, but it does when you do the Great Commission, right? When you get on the ground, you start discipling people. What are you discipling them towards? Uh, that's where the rub is, right? So we can all participate together. That's one thing. There's not a problem to participate together, but it is what we are, what we are, what we are trying to lead them towards, that is an issue that we need to say, are we on the same page here? Do we don't want to create confusion? Uh, but 100%, I, I think that, yeah, we are, 
we're Baptists, but Baptists will look different where we're at here versus yeah. where we came from. Yeah. And I, I don't think that there's any Baptist that would deny this. We need to get together and do the mission. And I think that sometimes you get frustrated that at statements like that because the assumption is, well, if we're caring about this, that means we don't care about that. There's a legitimate critique that we only have so much energy. And if we spend it on time, like fighting these battles, uh, we don't have time and money and resources to do the missions piece. And so that, that's a legitimate critique. We're all in favor of this, but if we don't have um, a shared gospel, um, if we don't have a shared uh, core of what makes uh, the Baptist version of this uh, uh, work, then yeah, um, what are we going out? You know, that, that's the whole ecumenical movement. They, they went out and did good works because they couldn't agree on the, what the gospel even meant after they, they watered it down so far. Uh, let's just go dig some wells because we, we know that's good. Um, so absolutely, we've got to do this, but um, we, we do have to figure out what are, the, what are the boundaries that we can operate within. So, um, uh, but I agree, uh, Baptists do have a tendency to, to fight. Um, and when we run out of things to fight, we fight about other things. And we don't want to get so sucked into this uh, pure view that we we forget that people need Christ uh, or else they're lost, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, this last one I'm kind of mixed feeling on, but let's uh, let's uh, do it. This uh, let's focus our energy on external threats instead of internal battles. Global secularism and religious persecutions are increasing daily. We are dissipating energy and resources on infighting when we need to stand together with as many believers as possible to overcome true enemies of the gospel. May God give us grace to pursue His eternal mission together, despite the real differences which we have always, which have always been and will always be a part of our movement. Um, so where do you think it's a where here's your mixed reaction to this? Let me hit you first. Right. So the the energy argument, we only have so much, right? But um I'll illustrate it. I know we're running short on time. So I'll I remember going to a coffee shop in 10th grade and my good friend is with me and a kid uh lights a cigarette. None of us are old enough to smoke and of course being a good uh kid they offer a cigarette to my friend and I. My friend and I I thought we were on the same team. And yet he took the cigarette and smoked for the first time. And mm -hmm. I was left there out on my own as the kid who didn't smoke. And so I felt somewhat betrayed. Um, the, the, the reality is that if we only focus on the external and we don't actually look inter in, in, interior, what we might find is that the people that we consider brothers are no different than the world. And we get sabotaged from within. So, so my thought with this is absolutely the world is coming against us and we have to be uh, aware of this. But I think having tighter boundaries inside or very clear, let's put it that way, clear boundaries of who we are allows us to stand very, very firmly with fellow Southern Baptists against the world. Yeah. And it increases our ability to stand arm to arm with our non-SBC brothers because we know on what levels we can partner against the world and what levels we can't. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that this argument mixes it a little bit that, hey, we, we got to focus on this and not that. No, I think by focusing on, on what we're talking about and having very clear uh, guidance on what a pastor is, uh, we not only can partner with uh, the Presbyterians better, uh, but we can partner with each other better uh, because we'll know what battles we can go into. Like, I'm probably not going to go into an abstinence um, uh, temperance movement with my Presbyterian brothers. Um, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Historically, we view alcohol differently, right? But I, I, I know that. Um, of course, half half my Southern Baptists aren't with me on that anyway. But the yeah. the reality is that there there are certain things that that I know I can march with. I, I'll go to a pro a life march with the Catholics every day of the week, but yeah. I'm not going to go with them on some other things. So by having a clearer uh, definition, I think we better fight the external threats um, as SBC and as other churches. So I don't yeah. think this is an opposition. Yeah, no, and I would agree. I, I think I think you're absolutely right, and that's one of those ones that like it's it is it's a there's clearly there are things that we need to be addressing, and I get that that there's bigger there are bigger pressing things. I guess I'd say it this way: there's there's huge pressing things for our culture right now that we need to make sure that we're standing on. Um, and and obviously, some would say, well, the issues that we're fighting about, like with this, with the issue of title of pastor, that's not as big of a deal. I, I can understand what somebody's saying about that, that we should make sure that we're we're fighting back on the things that those big things. Right. Um, but still, I think I think you make a good point, too, is that, no, that some of those clear those clear lines help us strengthen us. Uh, as we link arms with others, this is who we are. 
and uh, and be okay with that. This is who we are, and and um, so yeah, no, I, I I would agree. I would agree that those are those are some good points, and I think there's some there's some good thoughts here uh, on on doing this. And my question is though, can we can we not do all of this with with clear boundaries still? Aren't can we do all most of these things with with the clear with a clear defining of it? I, really, is that uh, you know? Uh, I yep. think number number two, I think, is one of the only ones that you really can't do, um, you know, it, it, with uh, if if we pass pass the law amendment. So I don't know, man, it's it's going to be an interesting, interesting thing, because there's like I said, we're looking at all of this and there's a there's a lot more beyond this that these arguments that are being made. Right. That there's a I, I like how Orge kind of paints a positive of here's what we need to focus on going forward. Yeah. There's some he paints the picture of like, what are the issues at hand? hundred percent. Those are there. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think uh, I think it's worth looking at those. Um, but there's a lot more to this that people bring up. Right. That people bring up. Uh, you know, out, you know, they'll, they'll say, Hey, look, you know, besides some of the stuff that we've already talked about that, uh, you know, that there's the issues of, of, you know, how does this going to look in terms of our view of women, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and what is that going to do? Is that going to, is this going to, uh, dissuade women from wanting to lead because we've taken a stance like this, but you look at our history, that's never been an issue, uh, for Baptists to begin with. Right. Um, you know, there'll be others that will say, you know, things like this is the big one that got me that made me wonder, like if, if people wonder, like if we go at this and you'd already brought it up of having some sort of a cool off period or a time to just kind of figure out what we're going to do in compliance as a result, um, you know, will this suck up our time as a convention? Uh, and I think that's the big worry for some of them is this going to, you know, will it suck up our time to to vote out churches. Uh, will there, and then here's the question with that, will people just phase out? Uh, you know, because here's, here's what's at stake. You and I both know this. There are people on both ends uh, that we, we know in our own circles that have already said, depending on the decision, I mean, I'm out, right? So some are going to be out if we don't pass this. Some are going to be out if we do pass this. Um, and, and those lines are already drawn. So this is coming and, and people are going to make their choices my, my hope is that they wouldn't, that they would they would try to figure this out. But I, but I will say this on the other side. As a Baptist who likes what other groups offer and other denominations, and in a day and age when it, it can be that you can be part of a convention and also uh, be a part of a different group as well, show that, hey, I want to be part of this group, or maybe, you know, I've known churches that have been uh, you know, duly aligned in terms of they're part of this convention and us as well like that. That's fine. Um, when you look into some of these groups that I have an affinity for, and I recognize that, Hey, they actually take certain positions on things that, um, that I just am not there. It would, as much as I like them, I feel like it would be disingenuous of me to say, Hey, I'm just going to join and just keep those views secret. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, no, like that, that is who they are. I, I love them. I, I will. I will respect them from afar. I'll use some of their stuff still, but I will not join because those are. That's that's not where I'm at, and I don't want to. I don't want to create issues. I don't want to come in and and under false pretenses. And I do think that people should evaluate that. Right. That like this is who we are. This is what we're doing, and uh, and you should evaluate. Are you trying to bend us? To be more like you, or you did you are you willing to submit to? Here's what we have said: we are and who we are. Um, and 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 last thing I'll say on this is this is the one nice thing. It's not one nice thing. But it's a very nice thing about being autonomous, is that we have the freedom to pull out or to stay as Baptists. Right? That the difference between what you're seeing play out with like the Methodists, and we've talked about this before, is we lose nothing if you pull out, right? Like nothing is going to happen. Nobody's, you know, nobody's going to be disciplined. Nothing's going to be taken away or anything like that. Like you, you have the choice. You can voluntarily join up with us or you can voluntarily leave. Now, granted, you're not going to get certain benefits that might come from belonging to the convention, you know, in terms of some of the trainings, the discount, things like that, that might come with whatever. Um, 
But yeah, at the end of the day, you have a choice to be part of it or to not be part of it. Uh, and uh, and nobody's going to be nobody is uh, going to be brought up and, you know, and punished or anything like that, depending on whatever happens here. Am I wrong here? No, no, that's the that's the beauty of being Baptist is um, you, you we, we didn't confiscate Rick Warren's church when we uh, expelled him. Right. You know, you know, he's doing just fine. Of course, he had retired. But the church is doing what it's doing, uh, and uh, and God bless them. They've done a lot of good, and and I I I hope that they'll continue to do good, and I hope that they will will get. You know, in my mind, I, I still think that there's an error here, and I hope that they correct it. But it's not my business. It's their church. Yeah. Um, the one thing I would just like to say in closing is I don't think there's a single church who should leave the convention over the law amendment. Uh, I, I if you affirm the current Baptist faith and message, then there's just no reason to leave over a failure of the law amendment. Yeah. Because it, it it already operates. We've already proven that that it operates. I think it's a helpful gesture, a helpful symbolic gesture to move towards clarity. And if it fails and you feel like it needed to happen, continue to work for that in the SBC. You know, there, there's no reason to leave. And if it passes, uh, if you're in agreement with the SBC, um, Baptist Faith and Message, then I don't really see any reason that you need to leave over the law amendment passing. Uh, I, I just think that we need to uh, do this in love, whatever happens. And I really, really would discourage anyone from spiking the football on this because this is a complicated thing. Uh, there's different sides to the issue. I believe Southern Baptists are overwhelmingly in agreement with what the Baptist faith message already says about the office of pastor. Uh, so uh, I don't think that this is such a fever pitch moment that a lot of churches have to leave on either side. We just need to keep working on it. And uh, Dr. Orge has given us good guidance in the failure of the amendment. Uh, I'm with, with him. And even in the passage of the amendment, I'm with him on, on almost all of this. Um, some of it's general. And so, you know, what do we mean? But there's some very specific things that I think are really, really helpful. So yeah. uh, I, I just have that in mind as you listen to all the parties and everybody's worked up. Uh, the, the reality is that we've already shown where we stand uh, with what we did last year with Fern Creek and um, Saddleback. So uh, if, if if we don't get the cherry on top, uh, those on the on the law amendment side, for goodness sakes, uh, you just had a tremendous win and it was a very clear statement of where we're at as Baptist. And uh, and if it passes, if you agree with Baptist faith message, what are you, what are you leaving over? It's a restatement of the Baptist faith message. Yeah. Please, please don't. Let's, let's figure out how we can get through this. Um, with with a greater sense of clarity over the office and title of pastor. But but I, I will say this to the point I made earlier is if if at the end of the day you have to search and say yeah we don't actually agree with this, then I do think then okay then then there's your point right that that there are some things to say this is who we are and, and I do think every church you should look and say do I believe the Baptist faith and message yes or no and if you don't believe it then then maybe you might say is, hey, I love you guys, but I'm just not there. And so I'm, I'm more comfortable. I'll be on the outside. Don't you I, look uh, from a guy who has who has worked in the seminary world, though, too, uh, on the side of seeing people. I, I've seen people use Southern Baptist. They have no intention of really being Southern Baptist. They love the benefits that come from being a Baptist. They love the Baptist discount. And um, and so as a result, they bite the bullet and they stay at a Baptist church for their time. Uh, but then the moment that they're done, they're out. And I've seen it so many times and it's very frustrating that you get people who will affirm it for the time and then be on the way out because they really don't believe it. And I think be genuine, right? If you believe it, stay with it, right? If you don't believe it, then don't join it and just show, have some real conviction and say, you know what, I, I'm just not there, but I still want to go to your school. I still want to be part of this, uh, but I'm not I'm not there. I'm not going to be there, right? Th that is so much, I would prefer that, that people yeah. do that, that just believe what you believe and be be confident about it and don't be a chameleon uh, and, and don't just do it so that you can use us, like really have that conversation. But anyways, so man, yeah, I think you and I have a lot of common ground on what we think on this. Um, and like I said, guys, this is not a simple uh, simple thing. There are guys, and some of the stuff, Andrew, I look at this and I just say, you know, I know that there's more that is going on that I completely understand uh, in terms of some of the arguments. Because when you look at some of the players of what they're saying and how they're writing, I recognize that here I am, I'm just this guy, you know, at this church. And I look at it this way. This is how I see it. And I recognize I don't have the full picture. This is just where I'm leaning. This is where I'm landing right now. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it is, it's tricky when you see, you see really giants on both sides coming out at this yeah. together and we're under the same, the same umbrella of being SBC. Um, and, so yeah, pray for this convention for, for next week, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And just remember nobody that's generally speaking out has any disagreement with the Baptist faith and message. This is a matter of whether or not we need to take the additional step of putting it in the constitution. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that we're debating that shouldn't be lost into, Hey, we're for women pastors or not. That That's yeah. really not what the debate is about at all. Um, now I think there's some, some uh, posers <laughs> who really are looking for cover and, and this would maybe expose some of them, but maybe not. So yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I think we just keep this with a grain of salt and you're absolutely right. As messengers, we need to prayerfully go and vote. And if you're not a messenger, pray for the convention. Um, and while we're, while we're there, we're going to commission missionaries and we're going to have wonderful celebration of the good work that we've done. So, um, I'm excited about next week. So we'll, we'll try to see you from there. And, uh, with that, that's all I've got, Dr. Pete. Oh, I got to, man. We're good. So good. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment. If you got questions, if you want certain things, for us to look at while we're there to discuss what we see there. We'll probably try to do that while we're on the ground uh, as well. But yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm done, man. I think that's been a good conversation. All right. You want to bless us and call it a, an OTXNT? Let's do it. Uh, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you later. Take care.